The whole idea was to answer gardening queries from home gardeners on growing native plants. That was sort of the restriction. And that has remained our core business till today. We developed a bush garden. There was a rather nasty triangular plot of land full of weeds near the, what was going to be the site for the Biodiversity and Conservation Centre. So the park kindly donated it to us. And there we developed a garden used to demonstrate that using local plants, the plants that grow in your particular area on your soil and with your rainfall and so on, will grow without attention. Those plants there get nothing more than half a bucket of water when we plant them. They never get fertilised. That are fairly easy to acquire, fairly easy to grow, give quite a good show. But we did develop signage which says grow me at home as the has a gloves and trowel emblem on it which sort of speaks to everybody whether they've got a courtyard or whether they've got five acres you're going to be using gloves and a trowel and out of that uh, came the dig it with coffee sessions where zamia cafe kindly loan their back veranda on the first Wednesday of every month. It's quite free. And they come along and they can speak to master gardeners and at least one horticulturalist, quite often two, will be along there to give a little bit of a talk sometimes and to answer any questions that the people come up with. The Bushland team uh, developed more formal programs of uh, activities in the bushland. And these activities include removal of woody weeds from the, the bushland, removal of uh, herbaceous weed, the seed collecting at appropriate times of the year, and also uh, planting out of uh, seedlings um, into degraded areas of bushland too. There are two subgroups, so there's the um, Wednesday bushland carers who meet on Wednesday mornings and then there's the Sunday bushland carers who uh, work on weekends and that tends to attract more people who are uh, in working demographic whereas the Wednesday group can often times uh, attract more retirees so different groups of people come to those two uh, subgroups and uh, have from anywhere from five to twenty people depending on the activity as well. And, yeah, I think most people who carry out that activity get a lot out of it in terms of seeing the fruits of their labour, in terms of working in areas that are quite degraded and over the years uh, seeing uh, enhancements in the bushland condition over time. And a great camaraderie too within the groups too, so they get a lot out of it at a, at a personal level. Hi, I'm Liz and I'm a volunteer guide here at Kings Park. I uh, did the training here at Kings Park about 18 months ago when I saw an ad for uh, volunteers wanted in the park. The training that we get here is incredibly good. Um, uh, over three months we're trained to uh, be guides in the park and what that entails is the guides conduct three walks every day, every day of the year except Christmas Day, leading walks through Kings Park we run a number of different walks through either the Botanic Garden or the bushland in springtime into remnant bushland of, of Kings Park. And we, as part of the guides, we also help service the visitor centre. So we meet and greet visitors or, and answer questions to people who are coming into the park. Being a guide is is an amazing experience in terms of um, meeting people, whether it's fellow guides or visitors um, who come from far away or they're local. Um, and, it, and you receive a lot back from your visitors as well. Um, and when people are interested and enjoying it so much, it's a very fulfilling thing to do. At the end of the course, you wonder if you'll retain any of it at all. But I think once you finish the course, that's when your real learning starts and the learning just continues and continues um, because it, it's such um, a vast amount of plants and, and beauty in the park to, to cover, as well as the history of Perth, of Western Australia and the, and the park and knowing 
how this asset came into being. So much of the state's history taps into or is expressed in some way through memorials um, in, in the park. Yeah, so the Growing Friends was based on um, Tom Alford having some conversations with uh, some of the nursery staff back in the early days about surplus plants that they had. And Tom Alford, who was our inaugural president of the Friends, saw an opportunity to actually uh, do some fundraising by using these surplus plants and that were grown here in Kings Park and selling them to the public. Some of these plants were quite unusual and rare and not available through commercial nurseries. That was just like the genesis of initiation of the group and uh, over time it's uh, evolved and grown. Uh, it's become quite a big group with probably about 40 active members who help out on, on a roster basis. And Are there any uh, prerequisites for joining? Do you need to know not, a lot about them? Not really. I mean, like it's, it's you know, important to have a, a degree of enthusiasm and if you've got a degree of knowledge about it, West Australian plants and gardening and horticulture, it's great. But um, generally the on, on hand uh, in-house training that we provide is, is enough for people to sort of like, you know, pick up the skills required to uh, carry out the activities that we carry out in the group. There's a range of things that people can do, growing plants from seeds or growing plants from cuttings or growing grafted plants where people take uh, sire material and graft it onto hardy rootstocks or where people do divisions of um, plants like kangaroo paws for instance or other types of um, plants that are dividable. So there's a range of propagation techniques that people can carry out and get involved in. But in more recent times, the orchid carers have been working on a, a range of other species uh, that grow elsewhere in Western Australia as well. They're um, doing a lot more propagation of seed into existing plots of plants which contain the helper fungus with the parent plant. So when they put the seed into those pots, you've already got the mycorrhizal fungi there in the pot and the seedlings will germinate in that plant with the mother plant and um, be assisted by the help of, help of fungus to, to grow up. And then within the group there's like you know a whole lot of support activities that are you know crucial to um, making sure that our um, operations here are ship shape and carried out at the highest possible professional level because we are you know, at all times trying to deliver you know, a high quality, professionally prepared product. Every quarter we send out a magazine, which is quite a large job. And there's usually 10 ladies that come. Some of them have been coming for over 15 years. Um, and so there's a real friendship. Uh, halfway through the morning we have morning tea, which we all enjoy a bit of a chatter. Um, and it usually takes us till about half past 11 or 12 o'clock to get all the magazines, which there's over a thousand of them, to be sent out. Friends magazine is a beautiful magazine. It's very professionally produced. Oh, and beautifully produced, yes. yes. It's a lovely magazine. We probably grow uh, some something like about forty to 50,000 plants a year for sale at our four plant sales a year in March, May, the Wildfire Festival and uh, in November. And most sales we'd have on an average, it's like around about 300 different species or uh, cultivars available for sale. When the Friends have a plant sale, Friends of Kings Park have a plant sale, some of our members are there, distinguished by a bright orange bag over their shoulders and they help public decide on what plants they can grow and how they can maximise their success with certain plants. I think over the years we've probably um, grown plants from a list of about um, 1,300 different species So, um, and the palette of plants that we sell uh, is changed for every plant sale so try to keep it fresh and uh, interesting for the public and we work closely with the staff at Kings Park to have available to us material for rare and uh, unusual plants and so the, the, the sort of plants that we sell tend to be quite quite interesting and, and quite different uh, in general terms to those available from commercial nurseries and 
I think it's great, you know, to get those plants out to the public and you know, make people aware and educate people uh, about the sorts of plants that they can grow in their gardens. And uh, some of them are, are quite unusual and quite interesting, and and add to the um, interesting plants that people can grow in their gardens. And, and and people who participate in the Growing Friends get a lot out of it uh, in terms of you know seeing the fruits of their labours. Uh, going out to uh, sale at our four plant sales and again like in the other groups it's a great uh, camaraderie and a sense of achievement from uh, for the people who take part in what they they what they're doing what they're producing and a delivery of great product and um, that gets out into people's gardens so when I saw um, an ad to be a volunteer here, um, I thought, well, I love plants and this is uh, be a nice thing to do. But it's really given me um, a sense of place and made me feel much more like I belong now. I've been gardening for as long as I can remember, as from a child. So when I retired seven years ago, I thought the first thing I need to do is put my name down for the volunteers friends at Kings Park and that's exactly what I've done and I recommend it to anybody and I really enjoy it. I basically joined because I was interested in native plants and this was a good opportunity to learn how to, uh, to propagate them, to learn the different kinds, to work with seeds and cuttings we, we put on. Um, it's run very professionally I have to admit and People are very careful about what you do so that you're pretty well trained. Even if you're washing flasks or something in the, in the lab, someone's always discovering something. Oh, something, I've got something to germinate that nobody's been able to germinate for years. Or look, something's going to flower and uh, out come cameras and all sorts of things. So there's always excitement and there's always something and you're learning something all the time. Hello, my name is Deanne Raffo. Um, I've been a volunteer at Kings Park for about a year now. Um, I've just done the propagating course with Tony for Friends of Kings Park. Came a volunteer because I just saw it in the paper and thought it was something I'd love to do. Um, I've got a horticulture background and this fits in very well with what I with family and things like that. Yeah, and I love it. It's great. I've learned a lot. There are different techniques. Um, these these are seeds which we tend to do on Wednesdays, and so they go into a fairly firm base of soil. I mainly work in the nursery and um, my present task today has been potting on but I'm also going inside into the air conditioned area and doing some cuttings. Um, I really enjoy being involved. I try and get here every week. It's got such a, an asset uh, in Perth. In fact, I think we're the most visited tourist um, place in Western Australia and it really is a stunning place. So a great privilege really to belong to uh, the guides here in Kings Park and to be able to learn about it and, um, and share that, that knowledge with people. I think belonging to any volunteer group and contributing to the greater good of society through participation in not-for-profit groups is great for people to do that and uh, people who help out in that capacity get a lot of personal rewards from helping out as a volunteer. Being a member of society is being more than being an individual, I think, you know. It's being able to contribute in other ways, to give back and to help out. In doing that, as an individual, you get back a lot of rewards. And one of the things that you get back from that, apart from the satisfaction of doing it, is the personal friendships and the camaraderie of the groups that you, you're a part of. Within the context of King's Park, there are, you know, there are some 500 active volunteers who help out. And I know that the Kings Park staff and the board here in Kings Park value and highly respect the contributions that all volunteers make here in Kings Park.